in accordance with the council's protocol filming of public meetings. Thank you. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody to tonight's meeting. Um, and item number one on the agenda is apologies. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, no, no. <laughs> oh, okay, well no, no, not yet, <laughs> Chair. No. <laughs> Apologies received from uh, councillors uh, uh, Laura Golden and uh, Nicky. Well, and you have uh, the council to go check. All right, that's all. Thank you. Okay. And um, um, next. The new agenda is police and public participation. Uh, the police are unable to attend tonight. They're uh, obviously engaged in other activities. Uh, but what they have done is sent us a police report um, that you will have a copy on your chairs and on the table in front of you um, that details the uh, crimes reported for February uh, <coughs> Now, unfortunately, they're not here for us to ask any questions, uh, but just looking at those. Is there anything that you would like asking of the police? Or well, I'm comments? amazed. I've never seen truancy on it before. Mm. I've never ever in all these years ever seen truancy. I mean, they used to be what you used to call the, the school mother, didn't they? Yeah, used to go around it. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah no, when I was kid. Yeah, when I was So, you know, it's it something new. I've just started checking up on kids. I have no idea. I've not heard of it. I don't no. know. Hopefully they'll be here next meeting and then yeah. they'll be able to ask that question, won't they? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Just that. The, uh, the police and the social gravity team, that's have been doing more patrols in the area, so that's probably why you're picking up the younger, the younger people in the area. Uh, and also, I'll just say to the moment, it looks like they're stripping the, the, the things down a lot more, whereas mm. before we used to get that social gravity, you, you, you truly see it coming for that shit. Mm. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's a, a breakdown of everything that's been reported for uh, February for us. Okay. And linked into item number two is public participation. It's lovely to see so many members of the public here this evening. Um, so, are you all here to observe, or have you got items that you would like to raise with the parish council? Yeah, okay, if I can come to you first. Yes, um, thank you. Um, I emailed um, a year ago about promoting wildflowers, looking at how frequently villages were being cut, um, both in relation to grass, which is the responsibility of the parish council, and also uh, Notts County Council, which is responsible for highways. Um, I got a response saying that you would have a discussion about it and also Church to Knox. Um, I didn't hear any more, so I emailed again. Um, so I just wanted to raise it again. Um, I spoke, well, I spoke, emailed last year to Knox County Council, who said that they were following plant life guidance and Knox Wildlife Trust guidance, which is excellent. And they were setting up areas where they were limiting mowing. Um, they did make the point to me, which was really interesting, that it isn't actually a money-saving operation because they do have to go out at certain times of the year and uh, they have to leave the grass and then they have to go and collect it. So it's not necessarily resource-saving, which was very interesting. But they did say that that's what they were doing um, and that they were approaching parish councils and, to see, and district councils to see who was interested in participating in having some of these um, different mowing regimes around their villages. Mm. Um, I looked for an update this year and it, there was an update from September last year which said that 15 uh, areas in the county, um, it was all set up and running last year, there were another 11 this year. Um, so one of the things I asked in my email last year and this year was, what's the approach here? Have you been approached? Um, is there an interest um, in getting involved in that? Um, just to be clear, this isn't, you've probably seen in Doncaster and Rotherham, they started the, um, the idea of sowing wildflower seeds and have those glorious central reservations. That's something different to having a, 
reduced mowing regime, which allows the natural wildflowers to grow. So obviously, all there's a response to the decimation of insect populations, climate emergency. Um, so the uh, response I got, um, no, sorry, the response I've seen from the report that was done in September last year was that that was up and going. But what I don't know is whether the extra 11 areas that are going to be included this year include any in Bassett Law or any around here. So I'm just interested to know what the parish's view on it is. First of all, can I apologise for the time I have changed? It's all right, there's sure. a lot happened in the last year. <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. I wasn't going to mention in the report this happened. Uh, but what I did do uh, when, you, when you first spoke to me, um, the first thing I would mention is that the county don't cut any grass in this parish um, for the simple reason that the parish council took on that duty on behalf of the county some years ago so that we could maintain standards. The county has a legal obligation to maintain standards that ensure road, state, road, road safety. Mm -hmm. So the, actually, the actual appearance of grassed areas and birds and things like that <coughs> is a secondary consideration. That's why the parish council wanted mm -hmm. to get involved directly so that we could maintain decent standards, which we do. We have the occasional problem which is raised with us and we try to solve any problems. When you made the approach to it, first of all, the county has not been in touch with this parish about any project of that nature at all. And they may have reasons for that. It may well be that they sort of look at our situation, they realise they're not doing any work in this parish, and therefore are not probably involved in it. But I did approach a couple of parishes who were um, involved in the scheme, and I think the, the honest response is to say that they had found advantages and disadvantages. Um, some of the disadvantages related to uh, people's attitude towards these areas that were developing for wildflowers. And because they've not been cooked properly and things like that, they had a problem with people walking with dogs and taking uh, 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 dogs and not being very careful about, about clearing up and all the rest of it. Um, but we have a contract who undertakes our, um, uh, our grass cutting and the contract for the grass cutting is due for consideration this next summer. I have spoken to him about the potential for wildflower uh, areas but we'd have to be uh, selective with, with the areas that we would be talking about to try and avoid some of the problems that I've already ascertained. But he has agreed to have a, some time with us to talk about areas that might be appropriate. Um, he obviously can undertake the wildlife, wildlife, uh, wildflower sowing, uh, etc. Um, um, the wood it, it's a, it's a, I'm sorry I'm being a bit vague about this, but there, there is a cost involved. I'm not sure at this point in time whether that cost is going to be in addition to what we already pay, because the theory is if they're not cut in an area that should be a bit cheaper but then of course you've got to set against that the cost of doing it but what I will undertake to do um, before the next meeting is have further discussion and I will come back to you about what we think we might be able to look at that's great thank you just to be clear the um, I'm not talking about sowing wildflower seeds I'm talking about uh, just not cutting the grass so what's there anyway as a chance to flower yes yeah. Yes, and that's the part of the um, that's the part of the process, shall we say, that encourages people to think, oh, they're not cutting the grass anymore, so we basically uh, treat yeah. it as though it's just <coughs> being left to use for anything. Do that anyway. Um, <laughs> but, but, but nevertheless, that, that reason, in my view, is not sufficient to ignore it altogether. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to talk to the contractor further and I will do that over the next few months. Yeah, that's great, thank you. Before. I mean, one of the bits of grass, I'm no expert on where the grass is in Carlton no, at all, no, but no, one no, of the no, bits no. of grass I've very much noticed is the bit near the, um, at the Center. end of Northumberland, yeah, that's right. near the youth yeah. centre. Yeah. What a brilliant project for the, for the youth club to see Absolutely. just what happens when you don't mm -hmm. cut the grass. Um, that's a bit of grass that's got, it, got a big sign on saying no ball games. So yes. what on earth yes. do you do with yes. it? So yes. That's one of the areas I've yeah. been intensely discussing with the contract. Yeah. Yeah.
Thank um, you. So again, apologies for the delay, but I will come back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just come to Chris? You want to say something? Yes, Chairman. Really, Peter said that what, what I would have said anyway. <coughs> there's some people. <coughs> no, I'm most of you, I think. Wildflowers has been a large part of my life, and my late wife was actually a qualified botanist. So we did a lot of work of our own, mainly just detecting and reporting in for what grows in certain areas. But as Peter said, which is more relevant, we were approached, but I can't remember the detail of it, and we did agree that we, because I was one who put my name forward, who said mm -hmm. I'll be involved in this, um, that if, but the other one, as far as I can recall, it was something to do with wildflowers, the encouragement of wildflowers, um, but I think, well, let, I'll be honest, I can't remember what the detail of it was. It's a fair old while ago, but we did express <coughs> an interest oh. in looking at whatever was available, but uh, nothing came back. So I think that's what Peter said, really. Yes, we're interested. We've got very, well, it, could, it strikes me straight away. We've got the massive area of the new cemetery, mm. uh, which we're looking for different things in different areas of that, that probably lends itself in some way to that kind of project. <coughs> Sorry, just No, go on, Peter. There is an area designated. Yeah, there is. Yeah. 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 Well, so we're halfway there then. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, it's something we're interested in, but we need to know the detail. Um, but we haven't, well, I haven't forgotten about it. It must be two years since, uh, yeah. or even longer. Time flies as you get old. <laughs> Time flies when we get lockdowns. <laughs> yeah. No, it didn't. Is it dry? So, does that answer your question it for does, now? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was another matter that I'd okay. written about, which was yeah. about the phone box at yep. the post office on High Road. Mm -hmm. It's derelict, it's empty. BT has a scheme, a doctor post office, a doctor post box rather, yeah. seems to cost a pound, for doctor, which you become. He was a doctor. Oh, have you? Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. <laughs> what is not so brilliant is determining its use. And, and, and uh, uh, again, you know, it does need um, refurbishing, yeah. doing up and making decent. Yeah. Whether or not it's a good idea to leave it where it is or whether we can use it as a feature elsewhere is a matter for discussion. Um, we have had some thoughts on, well, the chairman's had some thoughts on how we might approach this. Uh, um, we're going to try and get the views of people relating to the future use of that box at the uh, Jubilee event in, in, in Jubilee right. this year yeah. by consulting people and then we'll have a look at what people are suggesting and see what might be more practical and useful use. But thanks for raising it. Um, and, but that's not, can, can I just make it clear, um, not, notwithstanding that, uh, it needs cleaning up and sorting out and we yeah. will do that. Yeah. Marvellous, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, one of the problems we had when we first got <coughs> first called to it, that's the word, um, and it was the only one. There are so many regulations you've got to go through. Oh, yeah. Mm. Even though they don't own it anymore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in particular, yeah. the paint. Yeah. Mm. The paint is a, a, a particular it's, colour. It's a particular yeah. red. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you yeah. can't yeah. just use any yeah. one, just go and. Uh, there, there have been added what might be called complications because when we went down to try and do something with it, um, I had the people at the post office telling me that we needed uh, what they said was a verbal whaling to enter the post box, <laughs> even though it had been turned over to us by the uh, uh, telephone. Um, I've never heard of a verbal, verbal whaling before. So I tried to find out a bit more about it, and I still haven't come to an understanding with the people at the post office, but I'm sure we will, and, um, and we will proceed in the way that I've described it. Yeah. Yes, sorry, that's uh, a system that we used quite a long time ago, and I part of it's uh, one of the problems of the council, looking into it. all over the country, we're trying to find systems of dispersing youth, and there was a lot of um, What happens if you send a very high pitch 
sun, the adults can't hear. And the children, the youngsters, they pick it up. And it's just unpleasant. It's not hard or anything, but it died out throughout the country. <laughs> That's breaching their human rights. <laughs> That's why. We were always worried about it. We used the DRI. There are a lot of, yeah, so we've got street problems with everybody in the village because if, if we do it as a parish council, people might not be happy with what we decide that we think it would be useful for or whatever. So open it up. Let's get lots of suggestions. Let's see what people think, what they want to do with it, uh, and see where that takes us. And the Jubilee celebration is a perfect opportunity uh, for that. Um, I did talk to Peter earlier today about getting it in the tag Where Are You Village News, just to say that that's what we were doing. Um, and then if people can't get to the celebration um, on that day, uh, by all means, email or send suggestions in. Um, so we'll, we'll get to you on that one for the next edition, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Wanda. Fabulous. Well, it was the 15th of the, you know, the uh, 16th, 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 
and I've looked at the detail of it, but I understand that they are currently proposing to undertake a review of a number of boundary changes in the district. And one of the issues that needs to be addressed is the fact that people already resident in Seasdale Lane, who are just inside our parish, have registered their representation about the fact that they think it more appropriate they live in Workstop. So I am assuming that we will at some time or other be formally approached by the, by the district council, indicating any boundary changes that they think are appropriate, and then we will give our observations uh, in relation to what they are proposing. Ultimately, it is the boundary commission which decides whether or not the boundary change should be implemented. So that's the process, basically. And uh, I am sure that at some point soon, we will be formally approached by the district. Yes, I appreciate that. It was more the, the fact that can that letter be made public? Yes, it can. I, so, I don't have any problem. Yeah. It should be on the website. Yes, it's on the We haven't updated the website. No, not on the district council. Oh, it should be, yeah, maybe well, on the district. Yeah. I don't know what's on the district council website, but there's no problem with that letter being on the yeah. website. Yeah, it's just that obviously with yourself and one thing or the other, the minutes of yeah. the last month's meeting yeah. are not on the parish council's because it can't be until the... Until it's approved. That's, that's, yes. right. that's right. Yeah, so I didn't want to... No, no, thank you. Thank you. Know. That's, that's, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, moving on from the same same question, is the proposed boundary going to be red lane? That's, no what, that's what I've been told by no, the no, planning no, I, I, I really to incorporate the... Planning. Well, planning and planning department, they wanted to move it to red lane. Uh, Be to incorporate the can, can I peaks, can I ask I'm not giving their name out. They gave me the name in confidence, but well, they want. To, well, well, it's somebody well, in that department. Uh, well, I'm not. I'm not willing to give that information so out. Not, I've got it in email, yeah. but you see, for my, for my part, if an officer of the planning department is talking to you about proposed boundaries in this parish, it just doesn't seem quite right when we don't know. Well, so, that's um, because they were talk I was talking about the Peaks Hill Farm development and they were wanting to move it to incorporate the Thievesdale and the Peaks Hill Farm uh, proposed well, development. None of, those, none of those proposals have currently been put before the parish council. Well, um, and so I think... So that's making it like almost... Well, but well, as I say, the, as I understand it from past boundary changes, etc., the Boundary Commission and the District Council carry a very great importance to what the residents living in those areas feel, uh, and then consult with the Parish Council, along with others, yeah. uh, and it's the Boundary Commission that then considers the proposals. At this moment in time, we have had nothing formal about what is being proposed for Carlton. And when we do... So you've had the proposals for Pixel Farm? The only proposals for Pixel Farm that I'm aware of are its inclusion in the local plan. There's All nothing right. in the local plan about boundaries, and we have not been consulted. Well, even Hallam Buildings, that are, the developer, have said they want the boundaries changing as well. Well, they may well do, but nothing has been... Well, that's from the director of the company. Can I just interrupt one second? We've actually got two members of our district council here tonight, and Robin's just signalled to yeah. me. Yeah. He'd like to just. I, I've not response. been consulted either. On I think issue. I sent you a letter about it, uh, an email about it recently. Uh, I may well have done. But I've not been consulted. Either. I did actually include the name in there, but I'm not giving it out here. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter it's because the... I'll be contacting planning tomorrow. Because if they yeah. if they've made that association to you, then that is out of order because they shouldn't be making any. Well, I've anything. emailed Peter about it as well, and it doesn't matter. Questioned it's, it. it, it if, a, if an officer has made that uh, made that comment to you, then that officer needs to make that comment to other people first, and it's a process to go through. Uh, and as for a director of the of the development company making this. He can, he can make as many statements as he wishes. It's not down to him where the, the boundaries move to. It's down to the people who live in the area. It's down to the parish and the district. Mm. I'm not the, not a director of a development company. So I will find out an answer f 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. You've got my email address anyway, yeah. Rob. Oh, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. Don't I've been lied to. <laughs> no, no, no well, well, not to be. No, right. the, the, the one thing I want to make clear is that it, it may not be the blame of anybody. Right. But for open and honest government, and if that conversation has been had with you, that the conversation has yeah. been had with I would say, I would, as, a, as a layman, that that is where they want the boundary to be, but at this time, Mm. There is the de- yeah, the developer. Yeah, the, and there's a difference, yes. a massive difference between what people want yeah. and yeah. what people and will get after consultation with the relevant parties. And how can they consult the people who don't live there? Yeah, because houses are not built yet. Yeah. So. Yeah. And how can they consult the people that are don't there either? Yeah. So, uh, Bart, can I just make a point on what you said about the planning officer? There is a case stated in planning law uh, that it, it says legally the comments from a planning officer of any authority are not legally binding on that authority he makes those comments himself it's not legally binding on the authority and there is a case stated in law i can't remember what date it was because it's quite a few years ago since i read it but so don't pin your hopes on what the planning officer said that's all i'm saying Mm-hmm. Can I just, I'm sorry, I'll just prolong this, mm-hmm. but can I just, I, I feel the need just to make the point that um, at this moment in time, we don't know whether peaceful farming is going to happen or not. Oh, because yeah. We don't know. The land isn't sold yet. What, no, but what we, have, what we have managed to do is secure um, a, uh, a, a policy from the district council within the local plan that says whether or not that uh, development takes place, all the land north of that area, all the way to Langwall, will remain undeveloped. So the point that I to have plan made about the retention of views on the eastern side of the A60 uh, will be reiterated by that uh, action from the District Council, and it will mean that in a distance of something like three miles, three to four miles, between the workshop boundary and the land road, we have secured the views on the eastern side of the A60, apart from 100 yards opposite the court. Mm-hmm. So to that, in that sense, we'll be having two bites of the cherry. But is that legally binding? It, it, the, lo- the local plan is, in planning terms, is binding, yes. Right. Are they yes. Yeah, I say our neighbour, our village neighbourhood plan actually includes that because that's in our boundary. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and, it, <laughs> and that's and, and, not. Yes, but in actual fact, I don't know if you've had a copy of the comments that we've sent to the district council. I've seen, I've read them all. Yeah. Right, and we have made the point in there that um, it does not conform with our neighbourhood plan. Now, then, one of the problems with trying to make an argument is the fact that we have got to show that in planning terms, that development will affect this village in terms of services. In other words, people living in that development will come shopping here, will attend the civic centre, they will... Now then, the argument from the planners is that they will be using workshop. Now, um, this is all about (coughs) planning guidance and, 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 uh, and, and where people... And it's worth mentioning that it's also pointed out to us that the new development will include a new school, it will include community facilities. So if if needed, it if, says in the thing. It only says yeah, if yeah, needed. That, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think the other point about that, the other point about yeah. that, and this is something that may be a long term thing, is that if the parish did was required to provide any sort of service in that area, it will result in existing parishioners living in the village, probably having to pay an increased council tax for those services. Yeah. So, you know, That's there are issues to discuss. But we've tried to make our views such that we, on the one hand, are saying what we think should happen if the development goes ahead, but on the other hand saying, but at the end of the day, it contravenes our neighbourhood plan. Yeah. So to that degree, it shouldn't. And I know the District Council actually 
uh, given up the right to the CIL, the community infrastructure levy, well, well, for the same, yeah, any, yeah, yeah. any development but, over. But the, the other point is that we have contacted the planning inspectors as well, and we've reminded them of their comments in relation to our neighbourhood plan, right. which were extremely favourable. And we are saying to them, you have made this comment about our neighbourhood plan, but now, only 18 months later, there are proposals to contravene it. And it's up to them yeah. to decide the balance of argument. And so, you know, yeah. we can only wait and see what... I emailed you about this, the, the plan there, before our, our actual plan was finished and finalised about, about Peaks Hill Development. Well, at the time of our neighbourhood plan, we knew nothing of this. Yeah, issue. that's what you said, and I knew it was happening. I knew it was going through, and yeah. I, I actually advised you of that well, well, at the time. You, how did you know it was happening, can I ask? Because the director had already told me from Hallam. The director from Hallam? Hallam, the developer, was already in talks. The with developer? the Yeah, with the oh, district as council. As far as I know, well, 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 we can't just say this development is <laughs> still subject to planning approval. Yeah, it's... So even if it's in the local plan. So we've got a de you're saying that a developer has approached you even before he's submitted a planning application. Mm. It's interesting, it's several years. Mm. <coughs> but we can only do our best to make representations yeah. on what we know. Yeah. And, what we, what we've done that. and that's why I asked you the question yeah. well, I didn't, at the time. I didn't even know that. I mean, I, I knew where Peaksville Farm was, and that was about it. And I, the inclusion of Peaksville Farm in the local plan was only brought to my attention some about 18 months after our neighbourhood plan had been approved. 12 months maybe, I think it was. Mm. It was a fairly short period after. Yeah. I've got the email that I sent you somewhere. Oh, yeah, OK. Um, we did, of the planning department, I did personally, the planning department, because I was quite cross that they appeared to have so far and must be known mm. when we were going to bring our plan. And they said they had no idea of it. Um, and it there was no other, other it was our idea. And so I'm sorry, I, nobody knew because they wouldn't have known who the developer was anyway because it goes out the centre. Mm. And no plans have been passed yet anyway. No. no. <laughs> So, an ongoing problem, I think. <coughs> um, have we got anything to be raised uh, from any other members of the public? Yeah, we're, we're all, well, this is all held or something. Um, Catherine is, well, I was out next door doing what you used to be doing in this court. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and obviously, you're aware it's gone now. Um, I don't think there's been any any plans gone through. I know Eddie has, has asked you, um, you know, if you've heard anything, um, but really it's just to put our concerns through, you know, um, to keep us in the loop, and especially for myself, because I'm the very last house. Um, I don't know if you know where I live. <laughs> well, I know, I know the road. Um, yeah, I'm right yeah. down the bottom of yeah. there. There's a wall and a big yeah. wedge, and, it, yeah. and my back garden backs on the yeah. field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that wall and hedge, um, I have obviously had a correspondence with yeah. uh, Neil Gamble yes. um, about it, because I've maintained that for the last 18 years. Um, he assured me that when they demolished Jane Hints, they would leave the wall and the hedge, because obviously my garden would just, and the drive would just collapse mm. yeah. if they did yeah. that. But really, a, a, you know, we just want uh, a little bit of help with yourselves when the plans do go through, um, you know, to, to try and, and keep that. Because that hedge it actually is, I mean, you mentioned yourself about climate change, everything. It's, it's home to lots and lots of, of birds. Even funny, yes. Can I say that? This parish council will do all it can to preserve what you are talking about. Thank you. Now, when we became aware, a, a, a while before it was demolished, when we became aware of the proposals that the council got for that site, 
we immediately wrote to their uh, estate department, um, indicating the town neighborhood plan um, had a policy in there uh, seeking um, development to include uh, the sort of accommodation suitable for downsizing in the village because there are quite a lot of people who live in this village who live in three and four bedroom properties. They want to downsize to something smaller and there doesn't appear that the, you know, the, the demand is not appear to be uh, meeting their needs. Uh, or or the, the needs supply. aren't meeting, the yeah. supply isn't there. So I wrote to Neil Gamble at the time and said, would the county bear this in mind when they were considering the future of that site? I also wrote to the district council planning department saying that if any planning approvals or planning applications were made, would the district council have due consideration of our neighborhood plan and the need for approval accommodation? Both of the organizations responded and said, and acknowledged the uh, parish council's wishes and said they would consider those wishes at the appropriate time, either when the county were, if the county, sold the um, site for development, and indeed, um, if ultimately there was a planning application submitted to the district council. So both of those authorities are aware of what we would like to see happen. Um, and fairly recently, the, the council of Bidwell, who was, the chair, who was our representative of the district council, one of them, he, got, he happens to be chairman of the planning committee of the district council as well. He, he also wrote to the county council reminding the county of our views in relation to the future of that site. So at the moment, we are waiting to see what might be proposed, but we have made clear indications to both the county and the district as to what we think might be appropriate. Yeah, because my parents, I mean, I'm born and bred here, and my yeah. parents only live on Sterling. They're <coughs> looking to downside a theatrical fantastic yeah. mm. bungalows. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. literally next door to them if they wanted to yeah. buy them all. I'm, I'm, hopeful that, I'm hopeful that we will have made a difference in relation to what they eventually mm. decide. Cross, but but yeah. again, we, we, we can only, I mean, you, you know, realistically, the land is owned by the county council, so it's the county council that decides what they want to do with it. And realistically, it's the district council that tell them what they can and can't do with it mm. through, through the planning process. Uh, we can only indicate what we would like, because that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. But if, any, if I get to know anything about what is being considered or what is being, you know, um, I'll do my best to let you know. I will let you know. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And also, if anything is put forward for planning, as near residents, you would get notification of any proposals anyway uh, for you to put your views forward yeah. at any planning consultation yeah, meetings. Because yeah. I know that the homes just built, you know, across from the co op, the boat, all them houses gone up. And he's only three bungalows. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And can I tell you, can, 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 can I just, can can I just, can can I just, can I just say, it is hardly likely there wouldn't have been three if we had to put out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And the same applies to the Furbeck development. Yeah. There are some bungalows, but it's only a small number. Oh, yeah. And I have to okay. say, looking at it from the commercial side, that the company mm -hmm. obviously yeah. is involved in, um, I wouldn't necessarily agree that the bungalows that are going <coughs> are exactly made for downsizing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, there is still a need. Yeah, still mm -hmm. a need. absolutely. Okay. Does that help answer your question that you came with this evening? <coughs> yeah, I know things are in a very instant yeah. time. Yeah. It, it's not a, a, a complete answer, but that's kind of where we are at the moment. Just keep talking to us. Either this is a second or Tuesday, and everyone is very, very welcome to come along. I know, I just said you need to talk for a short, very closest one to the James in. So we're quite happy. You know what, we'd love to see them as a couple of them, and we'd rather people come along to meetings and raise issues and talk to us rather than just sit at home and chunt at and not be happy. And not yeah. really now, you know, we'd rather you come. Sorry, Chairman, can I just add that one of the reasons why we'd much rather do this is because we sometimes read so-called rumours mm -hmm. about what's happening on the site. We can't believe it. We don't know where the rumours have come from. Mm -hmm. But naturally, residents might worry about 
what the rumours are saying. Mm -hmm. And so what we're saying is we will tell you everything we know if you come to meetings or if you write to us or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you can always contact the Civic Centre mm -hmm. uh, office if you've got any questions in between meetings. You know, don't yeah. hesitate. Don't, don't sit and worry at home. Just no. give us a call. I usually you don't panic. Yeah. I'm not going to what I've told you. <laughs> Thank you. Can I just say as well that Callum Bailey, I've, I've emailed you twice, I think, and, and he's, yeah, he's sort of reassured me. <laughs> you just need somebody to know that we live in there. And <laughs> this is it, yes, yeah, you know, because when. You know, I'm born and bred here, and it's, and it's like, you know, you just see things. A lot of us are. Yeah, a lot of us are. You know, and it, it's like, I see people, you know, especially the elderly now struggling, and, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. And my parents are huge, and, yeah. you know, and, and it's... Well, I live across <laughs> from it, straight facing. I could do with a bungalow in about five years. <laughs> 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 Can I just ask, when we got, um, when we got, um, information after the tree thing we then got one with a red line which was showing what I thought was the whole side but the green fence hasn't gone up according to that I've done it the cheapest way possible it's the green fencing <laughs> yeah they have they've the, put the green fence because I thought they were digging my hedgehogs <laughs> yeah well, and I'm, what are you doing it looks like they've gone round the trees haven't they and the landscape yeah, I've can I just say Nothing to do with us. No. no. And it's the county council and AR demolition. Uh, Bournemouth district. That if you have got any concerns about anything like that, by all means raise them with us, and we can pass them on. Yeah. Uh, but we're not aware of. of no, no. That. But I am like thinking way. that you will have the assurances about that hedge. Uh, only for, for the demolition, gamble. not for the sales. So I think I may have to. Well, can, can I can I ask? I, I don't want to. Sorry, I interrupted you, but. You know the hedges that you're mm. talking about? Yeah. Insofar as your deeds are concerned, is it yours or is it James and Scott? It is on it is on their boundary, but it's already it won't be gonna change the boundary. Yeah, the wall's the boundary. The, the wall's the actual boundary line, isn't it now? Yeah. They did say initially the old plans back on nineteen eighty eight when they were put up. Oh, yeah. Um and at the side of where the wall of hedges, that was meant to be a path. But it's so never been a path. I've lived there from day yeah. one. It's never been a path. I watched me being dug on 14 at the time. Um, so, so Neil Gamble mm. said when he came out a few years ago to see us all, um, he says, oh, that should have been a, a path, so that's not even your boundary. I went, hang on a minute. I said, that has never been a path, ever. I said, it's always been here. And the cons just the concerns that I had was um, when the home was open, I always was told I got to maintain the hedge and the wall. But I'm right in saying that you have maintained the hedge yeah. and the wall all those years. Yeah. And you can evidence that. Yeah. So that's a point worth bearing in mind mm, yeah. when the county do whatever they have to do. Yeah. Do you want to um, get in touch with me about this? Um, I'm the county councillor. So I can move up and uh, contact yeah. the council about it. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Can you give, I yeah. don't know your name, sorry. It's Joan Midsdale. Joan, yeah. can you give Joan some yeah. contact details, Callum, and then uh, she'll be able to contact, contact you directly. Like, like, you should run that, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you've got. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Okay. Any other items to raise from the members of the public, or have we covered everything that you wanted uh, to cover this evening? Yeah? Okay, thank you. Right, item number three on the agenda, declarations of interest. Have we got any declarations of interest among the items? Thank you. 